Micah 7-8 says, For though I fall, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. And this is a scripture I have clung on to. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know that He is there. And you can lean on Him. You can cry out to Him. He'll see you through. My story is going to start with those seven words that Pastor Aaron uh, spoke of last Sunday. I grew up in a Christian home. But I like many stories that begin that way. Um, I hit rock bottom. I had some dark seasons. Um, I actually wrote down uh, while he was speaking, um, those words, I grew up in a Christian home, but I had dark seasons. And at that moment, I just stopped and I prayed that the Lord would help me with my testimony for today. Give me the words to say. My struggle with depression began whenever I was 19 years old. And uh, we lost my dad unexpectedly. Um, and that was, you know, really hard for our family. Uh, he was the rock of our family. Um, but God, God saw us through it, you know? He has a way of doing that. He sees us through things. Um, and 2015 is when my faith really began to grow. My family and I moved to Tennessee and we attended a, uh, a little church there called Victory Baptist Church. And they just loved on us and they welcomed us and they just mirrored Christ to us. In 2017, our little family um, was faced with a health problem um, that kind of took us by surprise and totally unexpected. And uh, God saw us through that again. He saw us through. Then came 2020 and 2021 and our family was hit with a bunch of things at one time and it was it was really hard. We had health issues. We had a diagnosis that, you know, no 35 year old wants to hear of. By this time we had made the difficult decision to move back to Louisiana. It was a strange season for me. I was trying to embrace the new life here while mourning the life that I had there. And I entered this, I call it my dark season. It was the roughest three weeks I've ever been through. I wasn't suicidal, but I did not want to live anymore. And I remember crying out to God to just deliver me, just help me through this. In 2022, I had made the decision to meet with Pastor Eric over at First Baptist. And um, we discussed a lot of things. And that day, um, I went into their prayer room and I asked the Lord to be my Lord and Savior and to forgive me of all my sins and, and you know, all of it. I just surrendered everything to him that day. And my intention at that time was to go back a few weeks later to be baptized, but it just, it didn't happen. You know, life got in the way and I just kept coming up with excuses and I just never went through with it. And then a couple of months ago, I started coming to church here and I was just greeted with open arms and so much kindness. And I joined a small group, and those ladies have been such a blessing to me and have been pouring into me and ministering to me. Um, and I guess like the real aha moment, and it was uh, back in October, Pastor Michael um, ended a sermon with darkness, Darkness will not prevail because the light of Christ is in me. 
and though I was I was I was coming here and I was I was trying to be involved things were a little rough and I could feel like the darkness starting to creep in but at that moment I knew I couldn't let it I, I, I can't let it do that again and so uh, that's when I decided I was I, I'm I'm ready to do this I just it's it's strange like I have this peace that makes no sense the things that would normally happen that would rattle me that would just make derail me they're just they don't have that power over me lately and I know it's because of Christ I know it's because because of him I want to thank my mom and my dad for raising me in a Christ-centered home I want to thank my family over in Mount Juliet Tennessee at Victory Baptist for for loving us so well I want to thank Pastor Eric over at First Baptist for helping me along my path. I want to thank the Lord for seeing me through all those difficult and dark seasons. And I want to thank Bethel Church for welcoming me and walking alongside me. And for the ladies in my small group for just pouring into me. I'm here today to publicly profess Jesus is my Lord. This is a wonderful person. I hope that you hear, come on family. I hope that you hear through these words that oftentimes it takes many years and many people and many churches. I love that she mentioned her church in Tennessee that poured into her life as a girl and First Baptist right across town. It takes us all. We love this church, but we love the kingdom of God more. What a privilege it is at this moment in your life to stand with you as a church body in recognition that the Lord is continuously pursuing. This morning, she and I prayed in the prayer room and I said, Lord, I pray that you will bring many people into your kingdom because of her beautiful testimony. That's why we do this publicly, to share and showcase what the Lord has already done in her life. But to recognize publicly, any of us can still come and resign our life to the King of glory and receive the peace that passes all understanding. She is different. This is a new chapter. So it is my great privilege to baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried with Christ into death. Rise to walk in newness of life.